81 192nd men died on the Hell ships. I won't belabor the topic with a whole lot more numbers. Believe me, there are lots of numbers that we can talk about. Uh, the lengths of the journeys, uh, the number of meals each man received during an entire journey, let alone a meal a day, um, or the amount of space each soul uh, had when they were crammed in the holes of these ships. Instead, I'd like to tell you the story of three of the health ships and try to give you enough of the story to allow you to understand it better. The first ship I want to talk about is called the Junyo Maru, and all of these ships end in the name Maru, which I believe is Japanese for a ship. Um, it's a 5,000-ton freighter. The ship sailed from Java on the 16th of September, 1944, almost exactly 64 years ago. On board were 1,700 Allied POWs, including 14 Americans. But besides the Allied prisoners, there were 4,320 Jav Javanese conscripts. We might call them draftees. Other people would call them prisoners. For a total of more than 6,500 prisoners or conscripts. With just two small lifeboats, this was a ship waiting for disaster. On the 18th of September, they met with that disaster. A British submarine, the Trade Wind, spotted the plumes of smoke from the Junio Maru, just off the Sumatran coast. The Trade Wind fired four torpedoes at the ship and then dove to avoid depth charges. Two of the four torpedoes found their target. The Junio Maru exploded in a mass of metal, wood, and human beings and quickly began to sink. The prisoners boiled up from the holds of the ship and many jumped overboard. The Japanese sailors quickly took command of the lifeboats and beat back all attempts by prisoners to hang on. The Javanese conscripts, paralyzed by free fear or perhaps resigned to their fate, huddled in a mass on the deck. Within minutes, the ship began to sink stern first, and when the angle got too steep, the Javanese began to tumble, tumble down the deck. Seconds later, the ship slipped beneath the waves. More than 5,600 people perished in that wreck, the worst maritime disaster ever. For those who survived, the outlook was no less grim. Even with less than a year left in World War II, of the 880 survivors, only 96 were alive when the war ended. The second ship I want to talk about is the Arisan Maru. On October 11, 1944, the Japanese-occupied Philippines were reeling from an escalating onslaught of air and naval bombs, and the Japanese prison camps had to be empty. The prisoners from across Luzon were moved to Manila Bay, where more than 1,700 of them awaited the creation of a convoy to take them from the island. Of the 1,700, most were American Army, Navy, and Marine personnel, as well as about 100 civilian prisoners of various nationalities. Loading quickly, the Arisan Maru pulled out of Manila just in time to miss massive air raids on the 15th until the 18th of October. On the 20th of October, the Arisan Maru returned to Manila Bay, and the convoy finished getting set up. The Arizona Maru, unfortunately, was the slowest ship in the convoy, capable of just seven knots in speed. As the convoy left Manila Bay, headed for Takao, they were discovered by one of the largest concentrations of submarines in World War II, Allied submarines. The submarines quickly began to pick off the ships in the convoy, and the ships quickly scattered to avoid sinking. That left the slow-moving Arizona Maru. The American submarine Shark II sent torpedoes off towards the Arizona Maru, and three torpedoes struck home. Two in the starboard number three hole, and one hit the stern. On board the Marisan Maru, many of the men were actually praying that a bomb or torpedo would end their miserable existence. On this day, they got their wish. Said one prisoner, Sergeant Calvin Graff of the 200th Coast Artillery, there wasn't any hysteria. In fact, if anything, it was more or less that if the ship were sunk, it could be that some people would get out, and that would be better than what we were going through. The Japanese guards cut the rope ladders leading into the holds where the men were and stood guard over the hatch with machine guns. After half an hour, with the ship still on an even keel, the guards disappeared and the men began to climb out of the holds. The Arisan Maru slowly sank, staying even keel the entire time. Eventually, she slipped beneath the waves. Hundreds of prisoners now floated in the ocean. However, the story doesn't end there. The Japanese had fled the scene, scared off by the submarines. Over the next few days, the POWs rapidly lost their fight for life. When the final tally was made, only nine American POWs out of the 1,700 who boarded that ship survived. It was the largest loss of American lives in a single disaster at sea. And it was the single largest loss of life for the 192nd. Fifty-four men, including eight from Company B, were on that ship. None survived. The final ship I'd like to tell you about is the Toyama Maru, which sailed on June 29, 1944, with more than 6,000 souls on board, more even than the ill-fated Junior Maru. One of those on board later remembered 
We were worse than caged animals. We were like criminals, ready to be tortured. <coughs> With no room on the ship, the latrines were baskets hung over the side by ropes. The rolling seas and slow movement of the ship led the men to become violently ill. Below decks, they were packed into what the men called, quote, silkworm shells, 11 men in each 6 by 12 foot area. Without room to sit up, they feared suffocation. Some of the men returned from the latrines carrying disease on their clothes and shoes and quickly spread the illness throughout the ship. Two men died within two days of leaving the port. Just days out to sea, the American submarine Sturgeon discovered the Toyama Maru and fired four torpedoes into its port side. Thousands of drums of gasoline exploded and the holes were quickly turned into crematory. Of those that survived the fire, many more drowned when the ship quickly sank. <clears throat> it turns out that while the story of the Toyama Maru is very much like the first two stories I told you, it's also very different. But this time, the 6,000 souls on board were not Allied prisoners or Japanese conscripts. They were Japanese soldiers of the 44th Independent Brigade. Hell is relevant. I'm not relating the last story to justify the Japanese actions, which are not justifiable. And I'm not relating that story to belittle the loss of lives in the Junyo Maru, which cannot be diminished or overemphasized. And certainly the loss of soldiers' lives on a transport is nothing like the forced transport of prisoners and the loss of lives on the Arasan Maru and dozens of other battleships. I only tell that last story to make this point. War is hell. The time was hell. The minutes that we take today to remember these brave men, as well as all the brave men and women around the world who have fought and died to preserve freedom and wars from time immemorial until today. These minutes are only the slightest way of holding that service as sacred, ensuring that every time we venture into the hell of war, we remember to do it from the highest moral ground, with the strongest moral conviction, and with the greatest respect for freedom.